This is Cultish Tendencies 14, part 2, and recommencing with the 18th of October 2002 meeting where Abu Iyad presided over some cult members and individuals in discussion with Brother Sajjad. And starting at 1 hour and 55 seconds, we can hear that Intizar makes a statement which can be immediately challenged. And he states at that time, quote, we don't follow people, close quote. He went on to say, when the people knew Abu al-Fadl was wrong, they were still with him, close quote, alluding to Sajjad remaining with this individual once mistakes had become manifest. But going back to the first statement of his, we don't follow people, we don't have to look too far in the recess of history to hear statements from the cult leader who they um, look up to with exaggerated reference, in fact, reverence, in fact, where we hear Abu Khadija stating, we test them with Rabia. So the statement of 2002, we don't follow the people, is contradicted by that subsequent statement, we test them with Rabia, meaning that Sheikh Rabia is an evidence, is a proof. And some may not have issue with that, referring to um, the Salaf, Ahmed bin Hanbal, and other, other illustrious scholars who were used as a mizan or as a gauge as to whether someone was upon the Sunnah or not. There's not an issue in that instance. However, it contradicts what Intizar said in that instance that we don't follow people because we see today in 2020 that there is a blind adherence, a blind following of Sheikh Rabir, which is more reprehensible than the, the Madahib and those who blindly follow them. And none would dispute that the Madahib, uh, for Madahib, and their uh, originators, should I say, are of greater stature than our respected and esteemed Sheikh Rabir bin Hadi al Madkali, Hafidahullah. Moving on to one hour, two minutes and 23 seconds approximately, following a discussion regarding Ihya Tarath and the Dawah Centre that they had set up there and trying to entice um, cult members and others to uh, participate in activities and attend that centre, Sajjad requested that Abu Iyad Amjad take control of the meeting because it reached a point where he considered it to be a waste of time. And he asked what benefit there was, as Intizar seemed to be having an argument. And he wouldn't have been far wrong in that synopsis, because throughout the two hour and 15 minute sitting, Intizar was belligerent, interjecting, um, always seeking clarification. Whenever Sajjad spoke, he, you can even hear him sighing on some occasions and, and I will, I've actually recorded the actual timings of when that occurred and muttering particular statements, declarations of faith in impatience um, regarding Sajjad's um, explanations and counter-responses. Intizar protested that he was not arguing with the other, individu other individual and he asserted that Sajjad didn't understand the principles they were trying to bring. This was a claim that he kept bringing alongside, do you understand why we are doing this? Do you understand why we are bringing these issues? We need to clarify and making um, grand statements um, that we have to preserve the dean, the dean is upon clarity. No, but listen, listen no, I'm, just, I'm breaking, I'm breaking down here. Let me continue, please, about this man. I said you should take some control, this is a waste of time. No, how can it be a waste of time? What, are you what benefit are we acquiring? You're having an argument. Are we having no, an argument? Fine, we have an argument. We've issue that is finished. Don't argue, don't argue. Allah, you know, I don't think you understand these principles, what we try to bring the understand of this Dawah. This Dawah is a Mubarak. This issue here that he's brought here, I'm trying to explain Let's, let's move on from this one. Let's just summarize uh, from what, what, the, what the conclusion is basically. Is that. Let me just summarize whatever. Yeah, that basically, th this is the issue. So, Abu Iyad began to summarize at about one hour, three minutes. But another brother interjected and queried whether he had at any time listened to Ali Tamimi. 
Abu Iyad Amjad denied this, saying that he never took from him. And the interjector was basically trying to explain that at some point in time, individuals may have listened to or taken fr from a particular student of knowledge, a da'i, or anyone for that matter, um, and that they would have changed their opinion upon learning more about the mistakes or um, problems surrounding that individual that they had taken knowledge from. Amjad moved quickly from that point, but he would revisit it later on. And he stated, and I, I will uh, paraphrase, and, but quote some of what he said here at one hour, three minutes, quote, the issue that's being raised is not like that specific issue, meaning the Ali Tamimi issue. Let me try and understand and explain what I've understood is that this Abu Fadl, when he came here and he was clearly upon a certain way of thinking, Umar Abdurrahman and these ideas he was having, what the brother is saying is that for someone to have been with him for that amount of time, and then at the same time, you know he's affecting other brothers, and they've gone in a certain direction and way of thinking, how is it possible for a person to spend that time with him and then keep companionship and not be affected in the same way or perceive or become aware of what this man is upon? and his ideas and not make it clear or make it open to leave him. And that's the concern from what I can gather. Some observations from Abu Iyad's quote at this stage, and it is that the same could be said to him and the cult members who, after seeing some of the destructive tendencies among their own cult members, former cult members. Intizar was to become one a few years later, as I, I highlighted in the previous part of this uh, particular episode. They remained with each other. We have allegations that have not been countered, and in fact, witnesses have come forward of individuals among them alleged and charged with sexual abuse and child molestation and rape being the most serious and nothing has been heard from any cult member whatsoever in this regard. They've remained aligned to the individual in America who's done that. When other revelations have come out about malpractices, wrongdoings, erroneous statements from among themselves, this is from the core leaders in that instance, there is a, 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 an unearthly silence that emanates from their corner. So they have remained with I individuals, even those who've come with um, spurious statements, without correcting those individuals. Amjad himself is in a current um, whirlpool, or storm, shall we say, with regards to his statement and maligning of Prophet Suleiman, and he's trying to wriggle his way out of explaining something that is inexplainable. It's clearly there in record for anyone to hear that he has made a mistake with what he said regarding Prophet Suleiman. We, we won't say for one instance that he meant that statement. He is a Muslim, mashallah, tabarakallah, upon the sunnah, even though there are some questionable aspects of that. So why is there that silence and continual alliance when this statement here clearly explains that Sajjad is being criticised for remaining in the comp companionship of this Abul Fadl, despite the fact that there are errors there and that he's affected others and that he could become effective. This is disingenuous. At one hour, four minutes, um, there was uh, a statement that they're um, asking for clarification or something along those lines. That was Abu Iyad addressing Sajjad in that respect. He then revisits the issue of um, Ali Tamimi and accepts that one may have previously taken from him. Then after becoming clear, they would have stopped um, using him as a reference or obtaining uh, any benefit from him. But then he goes on to say that this was not the case with Abul Fadl, when it should have been from the beginning that um, he was abandoned. So moving on, Sajjad reiterates that he's prepared to do whatever is required to rectify the issue. He was very compliant, very um, attentive 
and very um, engaging uh, uh, in throughout this particular me meeting. A back and forth kept going on, and, and in all of that was Intizar's voice and Intizar um, basically trying to bring whatever he could against Sajjad. At one hour and 16 minutes approximately, Abu Iyad Amjad then summarizes about Abu Fadl, basically alleging and stating that it's clear he was a liar. But we need to note in this instance that it's been established that there are liars amongst them as well. Abu Khadija himself. And we only have to refer to the occasion when four of the cult's websites were pulled down after the um, night shift um, did a session with me and I gave a historic perspective on the Salafi Dawah in the UK. And some may say, well, no, that's subjective. Then let's move to the point where it's still on YouTube, where Abu Khadija says that he was upon Salafia in the late 80s and the early 90s. And I will state categorically, again, as I, as I have done, and others can attest to that, including Abu Iyad Amjad, his relative, his cousin, and there are other family members and others who've known him very well, that he was not upon Salafia in 1988. He was not upon Salafia in 1991, 92, 93. Abu Iyad had just come to Salafia in the University of Essex. And it was actually Abu Khadija's brother who had sought advice from Jimas members at that time to give dawah to his brother, Abu Khadija, who was on the quote, unquote, jihadi vibe. So this was a clear lie and contradiction of what Abu Khadija said. So this Abu Fadl, I don't know who he is. Um, I'm unconcerned with who he is. Uh, he's referenced here because he was the point of discussion in which they wanted clarity from Sajjad. But if this individual was established to be a liar and that he should be abandoned and, and um, warned against, then what be the case with Abu Khadija in light of just the one element that I've mentioned here about this revisionist account that he lied about his, his Salafia? Proceeding on, at 1 hour 19 minutes, uh, Abu Iyad says all that is required for Sajjad and others is to make a clarification about Abu Fadl and that what they did was wrong. And the question that can be countered and proffered to the cult in this instance is that in, in the same way that they were asking for clarification from Sajjad and anyone who thought like him concerning this Abu Fadl. Are they going to give clarification about the multitude of scholars and students of knowledge that they then divorced themselves from? Are they going to give clarification? Because one thing needs to be clear. It's either all of the scholars and students of knowledge that they divorced themselves from and vice versa were upon falsehood and they therefore need to clarify this or the scholars could see that they were upon an erroneous, false methodology in some respects, and that's why they distanced themselves and did it in a dignified manner, not dragging personalities through the mud. So it's one or the other, and I think that many would be more inclined to look at the body of scholars that had left them. And as we know, the scholars, and, and in, particularly the scholars, um, are, uh, they are rewarded um, singularly if they make a mistake. That's not the case with this cult uh, or, or ourselves in that instance. We, we are not afforded that same um, benefit. So there should be multiple clarifications from the cult freeing themselves um, and freeing themselves from scholars and students of knowledge, knowledge. At one hour and 20 minutes, Intizar asks who will make the bayan and Amjad Abu Iyad responds by asking or stating whoever needs to. And I'll come back now to what I mentioned at the beginning, and that was Intisar's continuous interruptions whenever uh, Sajjad spoke. Um, and this was in an effort to browbeat. And for those who know the cult's methodology in firstly getting individuals who feel pressured to attend meetings and then having that agenda to browbeat them. And there's almost a foregone conclusion that it's going to go in favour of the cult members who have bought that meeting. So Abu Iyad was presiding over this particular meeting and I must be fair and say that the way he conducted himself um, was very, very just, very, very amicable 
and um, he was very understanding towards uh, this individual, Brother Sajjad. Um, that doesn't mean to say that it will extend to some of the things that he said during this meeting, which I will continue to address. And his behaviour was in stark contrast to Intizar's. <laughs> so here it is my here when I judged you now, is that we judge you by your dhahir actions. As the Sadhu Salaf were, we saw you together and this is why your brother Intizar said that you was with him closely. And any of the Salaf, all the Salaf, the Aqwal of the Salaf, they would judge you by that. As Ibn Masood, Ibn Abu Huraira in the hadith has mentioned, as Sheikh Salih Fawzan mentions, that uh, a person is upon the religion of his friend, they look to see who he takes as his intimate friend. And this is how we judge you. So this individual here, that you said that, you know, he has left, alhamdulillah, no, but he affected people. The Dao affected many people in needs. Destroyed loads of people. One brother who was with him, What's his name now? Abdullah, Abdullah, a white brother who's a Marine and he took his shahada. I can't remember the dates. Moving on to one hour and 22 minutes. Intizar then interrogated Sajjad about an individual called Muhammad Yaqub. And then a minute later, he jumped onto Sajjad's book, Riyadh Salihin, that he was about to publish. So. I've just mentioned something at 1 hour 22 minutes. Let's remember that at 1 hour 20 minutes, two minutes before that, Intizar was pushing who will make the, the bayan because he wanted a bayan. And this was one of the things with the cult. They loved people to give bayans. They called for bayans in Sheikh Rabi's um, home on one or two occasions. And the individual, the unfortunate individual, would have to give the bayan in front of all of those attending at the busiest time of the week. That's when Sheikh Rabi lived in Makkah in, uh, on a Friday, on Juma. This has happened in Riyadh, where individuals have given bayan. And what has happened is that they've actually been humiliated following that. Because they, if they had uh, um, endeavoured or thought that by making these bayans, they would be accepted within the wider circle or even inner circle of the cult. It never took place. It never occurred. That was never the intention. It was a point of humiliation. So the brow beating from one hour, 20 minutes, then two minutes later, Intizar interrogating Sajjad about someone called Muhammad Yaqub. And then the next minute, tw uh, one hour, 23 minutes, Intizar jumping onto Sajjad's book and speaking about his book um, and making allegations around the book. And then he said at just after one hour, 24 minutes, so we're talking a minute later after Sajjad tries to clarify, quote from uh, Intizar, quote, then we see you in Keefley, close quote. And he continues to jump about like a jack-in-the-box, trying to catch out or trying to pin down uh, Sajjad. And his intermittent, intermittent explanations are because we need to clarify. There are a number of issues we need to um, clarify. And the reason he asked about this um, event that took place, which was a, a conference now, he jumped onto that, which was a conference that took place in Keefley. And he mentioned the reason he was questioning um, Sajjad concerning that is because Abdurrahim Green was close to Abu Alia and he was in attendance at the conference and so was Sajjad. And the question that came from Intizar at that point was, quote, who are you really with? Close quote. OK, he then brings um, a statement from uh, Fawzi uh, al-Athari uh, at 25 minutes into the hour, one hour and 25 minutes and 41 seconds to be precise. We know from Sheikh Fawzi al-Athari who they recommend, close quote. So then we see you in a conference. This is recently. How long ago was this conference? And who organized this conference? Explain just, just now. Just after the Birmingham conference. How long? How long? One month, two months ago? 15 months ago. Do you understand now, Amjad? I'm not just bringing a slide from there. I'm saying did that happen. I want to clarify it to today to see who we really, who we really with. Because this brother, Ya Ikhwan, just, just, just this brother, quick, this okay, brother. Get to the point. Get no, to let the me point. explain. This brother, Ikhwan, he's been given the down with the people. I know myself and I don't praise no one above Allah and I hope this is not to raise anybody higher but I'm just saying that we know from Sheikh Fawzi al-Athri and from the other ulama who they recommend the du'at in England who they mentioned by name Ya Ikhwan me, 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 Now I just want to make clarification they mentioned the people by name mm -hmm. Now me personally Sajjad in the da'wah I don't know how close he's been with the brothers you know in the da'wah meaning in the sense of the Ikhwan who organised the main things I haven't seen him around with any of the brothers not that I'm saying that he may not have no connection but we don't see him around with the Dao, you know, when the Dao is happening here and there. But we see him pop up in a conference organized by this guy called Taj, 
who, who spoke ill of Abu Khadija and he said he took it back three or four times when he was working in the shop in, in Al Hidayah. You know, and, and this Abu individual is the one who, when like every time you point. ask, Let's every time, yes, we're getting to the point. Every time you speak to the Taj and ask him about questions, he goes refer to Sajjad. And this is the individual, this is the individual. Now look, look how we link the people, look how we link the people. We link you by your company, as I told you, that's what the Salaf do. I would then put and proffer to Intizar, but you abandoned Sheikh Fawzi al Athari, like you ab abandoned a number of scholars that you used to quote and misquote, more to the point, to browbeat or establish a so called evidence against your opponents. Now that you are against those um, scholars and students of knowledge, now that you're actually speaking um, and denigrating those scholars, where do all of these events now stand in light of that, in place of the fact that you now go against these scholars and say we saw something in them for years but we remain silent because the scholars like Sheikh Rabi remain silent, um, we were being patient with them. How does that stand, that being patient with them? Sheikh Rabi has said this before, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi has said this a number of times, we saw things in them and we were patient with them until we couldn't be patient anymore. So how does that apply to you castigating others about aligning themselves with individuals um, and not seeing the reality if there ever was a reality concerning those individuals until later on? Because you do not give the room and patience for those individuals as you give to yourself, as you afford to yourselves. Intizar, a few minutes later, one hour and 26 minutes, then state concerning Sajjad again. Please look at the timeline. Minutes are going by and Intizar is very active. Quote, we don't see him around when the dawah is happening around here. Close quote. So the question then has to be asked. So that's a criteria for the cult, that if an individual is not seen attending your conferences, your study circles, um, fraternising with your members, then there is a doubt on their Salafia. And we have to be clear now that with the cult, they hold themselves to be the Salafis. And anyone who is not with them is not Salafi, or there are doubts around their Salafia. Discuss discussion then ensued around an individual called Taj at 1 hour 27 minutes and 47 seconds. And Intizar mentioned that when he met this individual who continually referenced Sajjad, that he said he was about to start teaching Aqidah to Wasatiyah, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's famous book. And Intizar then swore by Allah that this individual, Taj, is Jahil. And how could he teach Aqidah to Wasatiyah? But then the question comes now, if this individual, who again is not known to myself personally, um, uh, intimately in any way, if this was an issue with him teaching or proclaiming that he's about to teach Akidah to Wasatiya, let's return again to Abu Khadija teaching Baba Hari Shah Sunnah. And then let's look at Intazar's censuring of this individual Taj and compare that to Sheikh Wasiyala Abbas's censuring sitting or learning anything from Abu Khadija and Abu Hakim. Which of the censures is weightier? Which are the ones that should be adhered to? Certainly not from Intizar. <laughs> أنه جعل هدفه النيل من الجمعية والسلفين الآخرين هذا يقول أنه في وضع حرج لأنه لزم عليه أو علي أن أسحب ما قلته أقول لا بل أكرر أن هذا الشخص ومن معه أكرر في يومي هذا الذي هو 16 من أي 17 من جماد الآخرة سنة اثنتين وثلاثين واربعمائة ألف أن هؤلاء في الحقيقة ليس همهم إلا إسقاط السلفيين ببعض الأخطاء وكلكم خطاؤون وخير الخطائين التوابون فهناك أمور قد جلست معه ليست نقلت علي كما يكذب هو 
ان كان يعني يسميني بالظالم والمفتري فانا اقول هو يكذب علي اني انه نقل نقلت لي اكاذيب انا بنفسي جلست عنده ساعات كما هو مسجل وسالته عن الاسباب التي لاجله يحذر من السلفيين في بريطانيا وغيرهم والافراد الذين يجد فيهم بعض الاخطاء كل هذا قد ناقشته فيها فلم اجد عنده شيئا ولا زلت اكرر ان هؤلاء ليسوا من طلاب العلم وليسوا معروفين انهم طلب العلم انما يحضرون عند بعض المشايخ فحق لهم ان ينقلوا كلام علمائنا رحمه حفظهم الله ورحم الله من مات منهم لكنه لا يجوز لهم ان يفتوا بانفسهم ووقد عليهم هؤلاء جهال ولا شك فيه هؤلاء جهال ولا شك فيه هؤلاء جهال ولا شك فيه at 1 hour 30 minutes we hear intizar ranting about al hidayah and how they are apparently fighting against salafia they had hidden meetings against the brothers and he stated here quote wallahi they fight against our salafia close quote again what he and other seasoned cult members do um from some of those who graduated from medina and live in jeddah as well when they use this catchphrase and we have dr abdullah lahmami who I've referred to before making that they fight the salafis they are attacking the salafis they mean none other than themselves exclusively they believe they are the true and only purveyors of salafia and nobody else um counts in that particular instance now continuing with intizar because he's the main spokesman he asks sajad whether he understands why they keep raising these issues that there are more than one and he stated here the reason for him not smiling or laughing throughout the meeting because he sees it as a serious m- matter and i would add at this particular point that this is straight out of the cult playbook you only have to look at other cults from other religious denominations as well as ones uh, that purport to be muslim and his behavior and his insistence on attacking browbeating sajad is something synonymous and can be found in any research around cult behavior at about 1 hour 31 minutes approximately there's silence there's a pause for a short moment but as soon as sajad begins to speak intizar is off at him again you can hear his sighing and his impatience as sajad speaks and he accuses sajad of going around the houses and not being direct and this is an indiv- and this is his explanation for his um impatience whenever sajad speaks the listener can hear this um and he can hear him proclaim at 1 hour 42 minutes and 50 seconds la ilaha illallah in in impatience in despair when sajad who continues to conduct himself very calmly and patiently is explaining yet another point now at 1 hour and 43 minutes 30 seconds approximately abu iyad amjad rafiq refers to sheik al jabri's distinction regarding hisbia and he refers to him having mentioned three to four categories but he refers to only the fourth category which is the and this is regarding attending the study circles or conferences of those who are not salafi and paraphrasing what he said concerning Sheikh Ubaid Al Jabri that those people who believe they can do some good and cooperate with these people then what they do is something not befitting and Sheikh Ubaid sees them in error because they are just adding to the numbers of those conferences of those those gatherings um so it basically is aiding and supporting them and adding to their their number and it's important to ask a question at this juncture is that the rule the conclusive position about attending conferences and the like and undoubtedly it's not the case because we see for example Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abad son Sheikh Abdul Razak attending for a, a long period of time the conferences of Jamia Ihya min Hajj um, Tarath and that was from his own ishtihad and so it was an ishtihadi matter for the sheikh 
and some may counter and say, well, um, how are we laymen capable of ishtihad um, on that level? Perhaps not on that level, but if one is involved in the dawah and ascertains based on what the scholars have said that they can attend a conference and influence a positive uh, effect or clarify the dawah or correct a mistake when it's made, then they should attend. This is um, something that's very important. And on another note, if applying to that imparting from Sheikh Ubaid that they shouldn't attend because they will be adding to the numbers of these erroneous groups, how does that reflect on the cult and their Hajj packages where they now advertise for Dia Bundis and all sorts of non-Salafi groups, elders from the South Asian community included in that, performing Hajj with them. And this is a very well-known and established practice of the cult now from a business perspective. But also remember, these individuals are going on, on Hajj. And they've been seen in Medina, and they've been seen, and, and Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri, Hafidahullah is apparently a uh, part of the business or is a partner in the business with them. And he has a few other interests in book publications in America, but that's, that's not the issue at this point in time. So in not fraternising or attending or aligning or, or, or involving yourselves at these conferences that are not primarily or predominantly Salafi, how does having Hajj with non-Salafi groups in which um, you're doing possibly doing ziara and seeing them practice according to their cultures, according to their the dictates of whatever branch of Islam they're following, um, which is likely to be one of innovation in some instances, albeit out of ignorance. How does that stand with this statement here? Because this is part of your business and revenue now, and no one hears you speaking or chastising the Diobundis that and the Sufis and whoever they are that attend Hajj with you on these occasions. At 1 hour 46 minutes and 40 seconds approximately, Abu Iyad uh, Amjad explained to Sajjad how other attendees could misconstrue Sajjad's appearance at the Keefley conference and why individuals like Taj were probably using this to misrepresent Sajjad while using his attendance to their own benefit and their own cause and again i want to reiterate um because justice is something that we we strive for and even though we fall short we should always aim to do that um abu iyad was very reasonable throughout with his discourse with sajad again in contrast to intizar who continued to pipe in and interject. And for example, when um, Sajjad was saying that he had a discussion with Abdul Rahim after this Keefley conference, and he was explaining about Safa Hawali, um, Salman Oda, and Abul Hassan and Ma'rabi, um, he was explaining and clarifying for Abdul Rahim Green at the, at this, on this occasion. Intizar was interjecting continuously. You heard him saying, Al Mubtadi, Al Dal. Um, he couldn't contain himself. Even when uh, clarification was being given by others to Sajjad, you'll hear him in the background saying, Sahih, Nam, yes. He could not contain himself, which shows a visceral dislike or resentment. And I would say the premise of that was envy because of how Sajjad um, conducts himself, his standing in the community, um, his ability and his independence. And this is a thing that we see that proliferates throughout the cult. They have gone after independent, talented, qualified individuals. We've seen that happen in the UK. We've seen that happen in America. Um, the likes of Sheikh Tahir Wyatt, for example, Mufti Munir, um, for example. We can name a number of other individuals um, in the UK as well. And those they deem they can attack who they deem they can denigrate. Those they don't think they can do that to because they know there will be a backlash at whichever level it needs to be, physical, um, knowledge base, academic or whatever, you'll only see a few, um, maybe their foot soldiers who um, haven't been around very long will come up and speak on their behalf or they may write something on a PDF or put up, put up on their website, but they would not have the same vociferous approach by those out of reach um, 
in bringing them down. And when you look at the characteristics of a number of these individuals, Salafi, I'm not speaking non-Salafi, Salafi, you'll see that they're more qualified, more capable, more talented than any single member of the entire cult put together. And this explains that visceral resentment and hatred. It's none other than envy. Because had those individuals been part of the cult, they would have been spared and more than likely elevated to a status um, befitting their qualifications. After a further clarification from Sajjad, in which he explained why he continued to attend and deliver the Wasatiya classes in Keefley, namely that if he hadn't done that, um, there were Jimas representatives who were ready to take over the study circles and a uh, Takfiri inclined organisation, Lashki Tabor, I, I recall him mentioning, and he said that the risk of that happening was such that he continued to deliver the study circles. Now, one would think that a reasonable, balanced personality would hear that, discuss it some more, but understand saying yes, the lesser of the two evils is to continue the study circles to avoid what you've mentioned concerning Jamas, Jamas and this other organisation. But instead, Intizar continues to rail against the confusion caused by him aligning himself with Taj, who was the host of these study circles or who had arranged these study circles. No discussion about the Maslaha, the Mafsa that was discussed at this point whatsoever. And we hear Intizar on the tail end of that brow beating on this instance state at 1 hour 56 um, minutes and 28 um, seconds, we don't look for the mistakes of our brothers. Yet this is what he'd been highlighting or trying to highlight throughout the meeting at nearly two hours. And we only have to look at the trademark of the cult, the Abu Khadija Selly for Publications cult, that they actually... They're vultures. They seek out mistakes and faults of others while covering their own. And students of knowledge and scholars are not spared from this as well. So this statement here, we don't look for the mistakes of our brothers, is a complete fallacy for everyone who knows um, how this cult has emerged. Abu Iyad provides further examples using himself as well to illustrate to Sajjad why attending the conference at Keefley was one that could cause possible confusion. And he went on to state that Ilyas, Luton and others are upon this category of confusion. So, pausing on that observation, the question that can be asked of the cult is, the fact that they've abandoned or been abandoned by more than 20 scholars over the past 20 odd years, is that not the epitome of confusion? Think about that. Because they are subscribing to themselves or ascribing, sorry, to themselves a purity which they don't have that they fall far short of to denigrate and find fault with 20 plus students of knowledge and scholars among them, including one that they'd been with and had held up their baton for um, 20 odd years, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. Drawing to a conclusion, Abu Iyad also cited the Jordanian scholars attending conferences in Toronto, Canada, as an additional evidence regarding the strengthening the Hizbis, in that by them attending these conferences, that's what they were in effect doing. And just prior to that, he'd mentioned how Abul Hassan had gone astray by sitting with uh, individuals like Aid al um in, in, in that respect. He's then questioned at two hours, um, four minutes, regarding a fatwa, about those participating in conferences and study circles of this kind. And while he couldn't respond and say he can give a fatwa because he's incapable of doing that, he's not qualified, Intizar piped in saying they're not giving fatwa but principles. 
And the brother then brought the example in to show why he wanted to get more elucidation on this point. He stated that Abu Khadija and Abu Hakim were informed about another individual who was giving dawah to a group of brothers. And when questioned about it, he said if he didn't give dawah, no one else would, and they'd possibly go astray from that that was the illusion or what he was alluding to. And that Abu Khadija and Abu Hakim concluded it was okay for him to continue giving dawah to those um, individuals so long as there were no strings attached. Intazai immediately ejected, as became the pattern of this meeting, um, saying, when did they say that? He hadn't heard anything like that. And the, the individual in the meeting, I, I was unaware of his name, um, said he, um, he repeated that this is what they said. He was certain that they both said that. And Intizar uh, retorted he couldn't remember. I hear a question on that, yeah? That's, I think that's a really good that cleared everything, yeah? Yeah. And you're saying that you can pass that table, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, what's it called? Um, you know, in terms of uh, cooperating with people in DAO, like sitting on the same platform and yeah. everything, yeah? Yeah. That ends up promoting them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's clear, yeah? Yeah. But, in, but in, isn't this a separate thing to go out? Yeah. Right? And teach people. I know there's, there's yeah. harm in it as well, yeah? Yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is we can't give a fatah on that, can we, to say, you can't do that because then that's a fatwa, fat isn't it? No, this Evidence specific this that. this specific situation yeah. basically that okay, you refer it back to the to the to the scholars and say you, you because the scholars what they give consideration to. I'll give an example. Uh, one of the sheikhs, I think it's Sheikh, uh, I think it's Sheikh Kuwait himself, whatever. That when you look, for example, when you look at a mosque, uh, you don't look at a mosque by the fact that well, so many Salafis that go to the mosque. You look at the administration of that mosque, and that's mm. how you judge what that mosque is. It could be an Ikhwani mosque, it could be Ikhwanis who control the mosque, but it could be like 80% Salafis attending that mosque purely because of geographical location or whatever it might be. So now would you say that that's a Salafi mosque, or do you say it's an Ikhwani mosque, it's an Ikhwani mosque, mm -hmm. right? So this is how the Sheikh answered the, 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 the questions to numerous people who put the situation to them about mosques and things like that. Similarly in this situation, that if for example the, the, the person who's organising and coordinating whatever it might be, whether it's a conference or whether it's circles or whatever it might be, and he is whatever he is, then whether you've got ten Salafis come into that to that to that talk, or whether you've got three Salafis or whatever, then that is still an event which is organised by someone who's upon his beer or someone who's got aversion to the Salafis. And the fact that that's taking place, even though we might we might we might, we might not see it now, but in the long term it might cause problems to the Dawah, which would probably outweigh whatever benefit has been done to those specific individuals. You know what I mean? So and historically speaking, we've seen this happen many many times. Like with, with people like Abu Ali, with people like Hidayah, with people like, you know, this type of thing is, is historically it's happened and, and, and people have experienced it that this thing over time, if it's not dealt with in the right way, it, lead to, it leads to more uh, 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 problems and, 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 and harms. So, uh, I'm saying we can't give a photo on that section coming. Uh, yeah, we're giving you principles, we're yeah, not giving for that. No, 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 Abu Khadija and Ilyas and others. This is a few years ago yeah. when maybe other issues were going yeah, on. Yeah. You know, maybe we've got more new issues regarding yeah. brothers now. Yeah. yeah. But then before it was like, oh, uh, one of the issues was, oh, how come you're going to Brother Ilyas? Yeah. Go to like the bookshop and give circles and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, he says, well, if I don't give dawah, who's going to give the dawah? Yeah. I know these people for a long time ago. This like that. Yeah. So um, Abu Khadija and Blau Davis says, yeah, you know, this is what? Fine. This is fine. Are you sure? Because I can't remember that. That's not an issue, we can be clarified or whatever. But the point, point is here is that... I said that, sorry, sorry, yeah. I said that as long as there's no conditions on it. He said there's no conditions on me, no nothing. So the person goes I to... Can't his, remember that. It was the last question from you. We said, is that well, okay, that's, that's not, that's not, not, an, issue. not an issue. Well, with respect to these people, obviously, when he goes there, he's got to clarify to them where, where, the, where they are posing. A few minutes later, four minutes later, two hours, eight minutes, Amjad stated clearly and this is a key matter to note at this juncture he stated that it's better not to go and give dawah to others and instead focus on teaching among themselves and then he gave an example of Sheikh Ubaid when he was speaking about Jamia Ihya Tarath 
and it was recorded, he said. And Sheikh Ubaid apparently stated that if he had attended a mosque or an event and there were a hundred individuals there and he saw only eight or a handful of Salafis in attendance, he would go directly to sit with those Salafis, ignoring the other multitude that was there, and teach that small group of Salafis. And Amjad then went on to state, two, minute, two hours, nine minutes, quote, we don't need this type of Bilal Phillips, Abdurrahim Green type of dawah, like you go to Tablikis, Ikwanis, and claim you're going to make dawah to them. Forget that type of nonsense. Because first of all, that type of dawah is for the people of knowledge who are grounded in ilm, close quote. So forget that type of nonsense where Dr. Bilal Phillips, Abdurrahim Green, who is recognised throughout the UK and beyond as a da'i who gives dawah to non-Muslims and returning Muslims. It's nonsense for them to be going to other avenues, other events to give dawah. Uh, even with respect to that, like now in light of the fitna of Abu Hassan and these other things, because some of these fitnas, they're good. In a way they're bad and in a way they're good. Fitna mm -hmm. of Safran Salman, Ali Hiyat Tarat and Arun. All these from an angle, they're, they're, they're bad in the sense that it damages, but in a way it's good because it just adds further clarity to the Salafis who are still upon the yeah, truth and it, it clarifies for, for, them, for, them, for, for the deen. So now, with respect to these types of issues, like going to these, these people upon the dawah of, of, of uh, Safar and Salman and these types, you know, it's best for us as Salafis to avoid spending our time to try and call them and instead try to teach it's ourselves right. the aqidah mm -hmm. and the, the manhaj and the, and the dawah and this is what we need because our biggest problem is that we don't we, you know, we, we're not grounded in, in, in affairs of aqidah or in affairs of manhaj from a practical point of view we don't know how to how we're supposed to behave how we're supposed to deal with these situations and that's because of our jahl we don't know these things so instead of spending wasting time and resources dealing with the likes of these people we have to improve this is what Sheikh Ubaid said in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a conversation he had in one of his telephone where he said that if I was to go to a place, he's speaking about Ihya Tarath. If I was to go to a place and I found there two or three Salafis and a masjid full of Sorry. like a hundred uh, or whatever, mm -hmm. I would say, let me take me straight to those Salafis and I'm going to sit with them and I'm going to teach them. Allah. Right? This is what he said. Sorry. We've got it on, on, on tape. So the point we're trying to make now is that now, you know, we don't need this type of Bilal Phillips and Abdurrahim Green type of dawah. Like you go to the Tablighis and the Ikhwanis and you claim that you're going to make dawah to them. But forget that type of nonsense because first of all, that type of uh, that, that type of dawah is for the for the people of knowledge, who who are grounded in 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 in, in ilm and whatever who will go there and they will people like uh, Sheikh Obeid or people like Ibn Baz or, or the likes of them at that level when they go to these people and they, they invite them to what's correct. That's for people like us. This, this is not for us. And it's better that we together that we stick together and we mutually benefit each other in whatever we know of, of, of the deen and whatever we can teach. And they, this way we increase knowledge amongst ourselves. And that way, on a personal level, each person can go out and he can give dawah to whoever, whoever is within his, you know, like, like his family or his friends or whatever, in a more efficient way. You know, why, why waste resources in, 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 in doing that when, you, when it's more beneficial this way? And that's what you find the scholars are upon. And that, that, that's what we're trying to say is that this is how the dawah should be reorientated. This is how we should yeah, behave. Sorry. This is how we should behave to, to, to benefit the Salafis more than we trying to invite the people of Bid'ah and Dalala. You know, it's, 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 it's important that this is how, how we begin. I just want Yet we have advice and recommendations from the, the kibar like Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Uthaymin, Sheikh Al-Albani about calling the non-Muslim society and the non-practicing Muslims as well as those Muslims who are not on the Sunnah to Islam, to the Dawah, to Salafiyah. Yet you've got this. This is a template, a blueprint of the cult. Not to give dawah to anyone else, but to teach amongst yourselves, to preach to each other. And this is what they've been doing for more than two decades now. And some may say there's nothing wrong with that. But the default position of such a dawah is to consider everyone else an outsider, to consider everyone else a stray, and in doubt, and then to ascribe purity and being the fiqhatun najia to yourself. I've not highlighted points in this meeting where there was reference that they were saying there were only two clear Salafis um, in the late 90s um, in the whole of the UK. 
continuing with Amjad's speech at this instance. But before doing so, I want to repeat what he said, quote again at two hours, nine minutes. We don't need this type of Bilal Phillips, Abdurrahim Green type of dawah like you go to the Tablikis, Ikwanis and claim you're going to make dawah to them. Forget that type of nonsense because first of all, that type of dawah is for the people of knowledge who are grounded in ilm. Close quote. So do we have those scholars travelling to the UK and travelling around to all of these venues and centres giving dawah? And when they do, this cult is among the first, if they do, should I say, this cult is among the first to criticise them. <clears throat> we have a question that says many people advised me to not attend this conference because some of the speakers are innovators. <laughs> Based on fatwa from their sheikh, how do you respond to this? Alhamdulillah, you attended. <laughs> كثير من الناس يقول السائل حذروني من حضور هذا المؤتمر بناء على فتوى من شيخهم الذي يقول إن بعض أو لا تسمي لا لا ما أسمي يعني شيخهم الذي يقول إن بعض الحاضرين أو كلهم من المبتدعة فكيف نجيب على هذه الاتهامات؟ Alhamdulillah. When such scholars come, they visit the Salafi Masajid and give dawah to those in attendance there. And they have advised us, and I was personally advised when I used to visit Sheikh Rabir in Makkah about giving dawah to the non-Muslims, especially in the field of countering radicalization, when he said, what would you say? Because he knew I was speaking to people in authority, governments and, and the like. What would you say to them when they ask about jihad? And I told him what I would say. And he nodded and said, yes, because we cannot shy away from that. When I sat in the home of Sheikh Wasiala Abbas about my organization, strategy to reach, empower and educate teenagers, street. And I said to him, I'm alone in doing this um, in, at this level amongst um, advising governments and uh, United Nations. And I don't like being the sole Salafi doing this. And he said, it's more important, it's wajib upon you to be doing this, to be calling the people at this level and the general levels to what the correct Islam is. So how does that stand from Sheikh Rabir, from Sheikh Wasiala? Um, I can go back into the annals and, uh, of history and refer to some of the personal advice Sheikh um, Al-Albani Rahimallah passed to the Jordanians concerning another organization I started in the 90s called Al Ansar and the dawah that was being given in Brixton when I became chairman. I can bring all of that, but we needn't do that. I think suffice it to stick with just two contemporary scholars there now Sheikh Arabir, who they adhere to blindly, Sheikh Wasila Abbas, who knows the reality of these individuals and have refuted them. As I said, continuing with Abu Iyad and Jad Rafiq's statement. And all of this will be available um, to click and listen to the entire duration of this meeting, which will be made public. He continues, but the likes of us, we stick together and we mutually benefit each other in whatever we know of the Dean and whatever we can teach. And this way we increase knowledge among ourselves. He then continued, and this way we can go out and give dawah to those among um, his family or his friends or whatever in a more efficient way. This is how the dawah should be reorientated. So this insular dawah, this cliquey, hisby, cultish dawah, we see cults like the Mormons that, um, do this. We see the Moonies do this. The Hare Krishnas do this. We see um, Nation of Islam do this type of dawah. Where let's keep it insular. And when you're speaking to your own family members and keeping it really close, knit, you can influence them and bring them into the cult. But leave everyone else. Like the Mormons do. Like the Amish. Leave everybody else. Because you don't want to be doing that type of quote-unquote nonsense. Now, this reorientation that he's referring to is again another part of the cult blueprint. And referring more to his speech, quote, to benefit the Salafis more 
then we're trying to invite the people of Bida and Dalala. It's important that this is how we begin. Again, to, to benefit the Salafis more than we're trying to invite the people of Bida and Dalala, it's, it is important. This is how it should begin. So they have no interest for the wider Ummah, except when it's the business, Hajj trips, a uh, wider audience to sell their books and their publications to, because then that's not an issue. There's money being um, generated to feed the cult's objectives. I will conclude with a quote from Abu Iyad. There's so much more here, like the amount of times Intizar used the term clarification. Clarification, like a buzzword. Um, and that was a buzzword of the cult. Like the condition that was placed upon Sajjad, that he must stay in touch with cult leaders. And the issues on this, of this Dao, because they was in the Dao a long time before us, they perceived his age and in him. So leave it to the people who know better. This is that's all I want to say, and Allah knows best. And the final thing is that now we're going to see, we're going to see action from the people. Just saying, like we look at the action of the people. That's what we did the people upon. Because that's all, all that we can see. Is that firstly, Sajjad obviously makes a clarification upon Abu Fadl. Secondly, he distances himself from the likes of Al Hidayah, Taj, etc., etc. And thirdly, he has to keep in contact with the brothers who we know to be upon Mashallah. this Dawah, which is Amdi Rafiq, Abu Talha, Abu Khadija, Abu Sahib. Hakim, Hassan al-Samali, etc. Because Sahib. if you don't, Sajjad, I can guarantee you the same thing will happen in two weeks down the line, two Sahib. months here. People say, who is he with? Is he with them? Oh, he is with them. Is he with the etc., etc. And the same problem is going to happen again. So you must keep in contact. Sahib. Even though I know sometimes it's difficult me, But you must keep in keep contact with the good brothers. And this in the Sihar will come on, inshallah. We can stay from upon this. This is a mutual contact. No, each other. You understand? No. Mutual contact. Does that mean? I don't know clearly. Both ways. Both ways. Both ways. Yeah. 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 Abu Khadija, Abu Hakim, Hassan Samali. They mentioned Abu Talha at the time, Rahimahullah. But it is well known and established that Abu Talha had left the cult by the time he had passed away in Jeddah on the way to Hajj. So this final conclusive cult statement from Abu Iyad was as follows. It's important to get across that our dawah has to be distinct and that what et whatever has been put in place before has to be reorientated so that no one, so that no one can um, use our actions and behavior against us and to say, well, okay, he's over there with them and they're over there with him. And he continued uh, elucidating on that point ever so slightly. It's necessary to end at this point and more recordings of cult private meetings will be released and analysed and shared with those who are interested because it's important to get an insight of how the cult developed, how it continues to inculcate its uh, followers, I won't use the term brainwash, and how it continues to deceive and lie to others from the outside and denigrate any opponent who knows the reality of the cult and its insidious nature, whether they be laymen, students of knowledge, academics, dais, and even scholars.